Hello, everyone. My name is Rachel, and we are ready to get started here. Um, I just wanted to give you guys some quick like ground rules, and then I'll introduce Dr. Harsh for this presentation. I um, want to start by saying that at the bottom, you should see the options to ask a question at the Q&A, and there may also be an area to raise your hand. So you can let us know you're here by raising your hand. And at any point in time, if you have a question, go ahead and click the Q&A, type out your question, and we will answer it at the end of the presentation. Um, but I'll keep tabs on those for Dr. Harsh. So I want to introduce Dr. Harsh really fast. She is an optometrist here at Nittany Eye Associates. She joined the practice in 2016 and serves as the Director of Specialty Contact Lens Services. She enjoys supervising the interning student doctors and is a fellow of both the American Academy of Optometry and the Scleral Lens Education Society. So we are very happy to have her here today. And whenever you are ready, Dr. Harsh, go ahead and take it over. All right, so thanks, Rachel. Um, I just wanted to take a minute to say, uh, please participate. Uh, make me feel like uh, you're here if you are here. Um, it's weird to be giving a webinar from my home, but that's what this is about. Um, so today I have seven plus a few bonus tips for stay-at-home vision in 2020, since that's what um, so many of us are up to. Um, and as Rachel said, my name is Abby Harsh, and I'm an optometrist at Nittany Eye. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Like Rachel said, ask questions as you go. Um, she'll interrupt me if for some reason my audio cuts out or um, something happens, and uh, she'll let me know questions when we get towards the end. All right. Oh, okay. Um, so which quarantine character are you? We've got um, three main characters. Mary, uh, she's working from her new home office, so she's not used to working from home and neither are her eyes. So she's doing a lot of screen time. And Mary, like so many of us, probably have hobbies that include screen time outside of work. So using cell phones and iPads and um, uh, things like that, probably even doing some exercising from in her home, so maybe doing some screen time while she's on her home elliptical or what have you. So she's having eye strain, headaches, eye fatigue, dryness, um, and she has trouble winding down from work. Um, give me a hand raise if working from home has made you have a hard time uh, separating work life from home life. Um, so you might have guessed, I am a bit of a Mary right now. I'm in my bedroom and before I started the webinar, I did not know how much of the background you'd be able to see. So we've got some lovely murals on the wall from my five-year-old daughter and I'm sure all of you and your uh, Zoom calls have been about the same. Um, all right, the next one is Joe. So he's a, a furloughed contact lens wearer. Joe is knocking out his honey-do list. So he is um, his wife's favorite person right now. Um, he is um, the amateur handyman working with power tools. So he is around a different environment than he's used to. He's got um, debris and dust, probably even some high-speed fragments, which are not things that you want around um, your eyeballs. Then lastly, um, there are probably no Gwens participating in this, but probably some of us have children that would fall under Gwen. So um, she is now participating in virtual school, which is new to her. So it's a different way for her to learn. Um, it's a different way for her parents to learn and try to help with homework and teaching. So she's using screens. Um, Gwen probably already used screens. She's probably better at it than some adults. Um, but she was already using screens for her um, home activities, for stuff that she likes to do for hobbies. So now she's added even more screen time into her day. So she may have some concerned parents about that. Um, if she's like most kids, she likes the screen close, whether or not she actually needs to have it close to see it clearly. Um, she may be having some blurred vision, some trouble sleeping. Um, some of that may be related to the screen time. Some of it may be more related to just the change of schedule. So we're going to go through the tips that um, that we can related to your vision and your new home lifestyle. So first is Mary. So like I said, Mary's the one who's working from home. She's like all of us. Have any of you uh, played the conference call bingo yet? That's Mary's new, uh, new hobby. So she's developing new work habits, new hobbies while she's home. We've talked about some of the symptoms that Mary has. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and see what tips we have for Mary. Um, tip number one, relax your eyes. Your eyes are engaged all the time when you're looking at a screen. Um, so your uh, blink rate decreases, your distraction ability, your ability to break that interaction with the screen is actually more tough um, 
So the first and foremost is the 20-20-20 rule. My patients that tell me they work at a desk have heard me give them this rule. 2020 is the year. Um, it's the measure of uh, great vision. So 2020 is every 20 minutes of screen use, take a 20 second break to look 20 feet away. Um, that last part is really important. I tell my patients it's not a break from one screen to look at another screen. So it's not a break from your work to check your cell phone for text messages. Um, it is a break to look out a window, look down a long hallway, really relax your eyes for distance vision. So if your current setup is where your desk is against a wall, um, you might have to turn around to take that break or you might consider just turning your desk around so that it's easier to look up and look away. So 20 minutes is part of that tough, um, tough thing to remember. Every 20 minutes of screen use, take a 20 second break to look 20 feet away. Um, this is another good one to tell the kids, not just uh, the parents that are working from home. But that 20 minutes time frame for most of us adults is when we start to feel like we're in the zone. Um, so feeling like you're in the zone might be a, a good reminder for when to look up and look away. The other thing about relaxing your eyes and that distance vision, that 20 feet away or farther idea, um, go for a walk outside at the end of the workday if you can, um, or if you're someone who likes to exercise, maybe do your exercise, exercise outside, even your body weight um, uh, boot camp type exercises, if you can do them in your backyard. Um, it's good for your eyes to relax to that distance, but also it helps signal a transition to your brain from your body, helping to separate that work from home life now that you don't have the physical building separation or your drive home. Um, so many people go straight from their screen here to maybe their screen recipe um, or just cooking in the kitchen, which may not give you a lot of distance activities. So try to give um, yourself a, an actual transition. Tip number two, let your specs do their job. Um, it seems silly probably to point this out to those of you that are wearing your glasses right now, but I bet there's at least a few people who are going, oh yeah, I should probably be wearing my computer glasses for my computer work. Um, so grab your glasses, put them on. If they are single vision, this next tip doesn't really apply to you, but if they are a bifocal or they have a really high prescription, um, you want to know where in your glasses um, is the screen distance. So if they are just a high prescription, but they're not a bifocal or multifocal of any kind, it should have been measured when you had them made um, to where they put the center of the optic zone where you're supposed to look through right at the center of your pupil. If you have a multifocal or a bifocal, you probably have the top for distance, meaning driving vision. And then somewhere in the middle is probably your computer. So you may need to raise your computer screen or lower your computer screen to make it so that when your head is straight, your eyes are pointing where they should be. If you have to crank your neck up or down, you're gonna end up with headaches as a result of your neck positioning. Um, if there's a, another kind of bifocal that is a computer bifocal, it has computer in the top. Um, so if you do have that kind, then you're fine. You've got computer in the top and you can look through the top of the, um, the optics in those glasses. Tip number three for Mary, um, put artificial tears right next to your workstation, right at your workstation. So keep them next to your computer so that you actually use them. Um, the reason that you're getting some more dryness than you are used to if you're doing more computer work than you're used to is because when, when you look at screens, your blink rate decreases by about a half. Um, and normally when we blink, our, um, our eyelids spread the tears across the surface of our eyes and the glands along our eyelids contribute an oil that helps keep the tears from evaporating as quickly. So you're losing out on both of those components when your blink rate decreases. So um, you wanna do the 20-20-20 rule, that'll help. When you look away, you'll naturally blink some. Um, you wanna combat it with artificial tears um, and then warm compresses as needed. Of course, you're not gonna do your warm compresses while you're on a Zoom call, uh, unless, unless your video's off. Um, but the warm compress is a great option to kind of help those glands that I mentioned along your eyelid. Increase your water intake. How many of us are consuming more coffee now that we are at a virtual workstation all day? And that's gonna dehydrate you, including your eyes. So you wanna make sure that you keep water and artificial tears right by your computer so that you don't have an excuse not to be using those. One thing we're offering at Nittany Eye are dry eye consults via telehealth. So like this, um, but on a um, more private platform. 
uh, where we can give you more tips, individualize more based on the things that you need, um, make more official recommendations um, about things you can do for your dry eye. All right, here's the bonus tip number one. Who out there, and you can hit a hand raise if this is you, um, are wearing a mask for the first time? Uh, first of all, if you're wearing a mask for the first time and it makes you touch your face more often because you're adjusting the mask, uh, I want you to know it may not be doing what you need it to. So try really consciously to every time you reach up to touch that mask, don't touch it. Um, put your hands back down. But um, if you're wearing glasses with a mask, this gets really tricky. The biggest thing is to make sure the mask fits well. If you are working in a medical environment, if you are a frontline worker, you're probably not watching this live. If you are, you're probably hopefully gonna be able to catch a replay. Um, but if you are married to someone who's a frontline worker and they're having trouble with their glasses fogging up, you can give them this tip. Um, they wanna make sure the mask fits really well over the nose area. Um, even pinch it down over the bridge of your nose to make that mask really flush with the skin. The other thing you can do is actually wash your glasses with soap and water. Um, you never want to use um, an abrasive towel with them though, so uh, you want to be careful on what you choose to dry glasses with if you're going to clean them before putting on your mask. So wash them before you put the mask on, make sure the mask fits really well. Uh, if you are not um, a frontline worker and you're using a cloth mask, um, it's probably not going to fit quite as beautifully as you want, um, but still the pinch around your nose should, should help a little bit um, on a tip for that. So that was the first bonus tip. We're gonna move on. Um, our next quarantine character is Joe. So Joe has been furloughed from work. He is a contact lens wearer and he is now a do-it-yourselfer. Um, so he is exposed to that different environment, like I mentioned, than what he is typically used to, or at least typically used to for as much of the day. So um, he is exposed to a lot of uh, debris, basically, um, around his eyes throughout the day. And our tip, for Joe is to practice excellent contact lens hygiene. Um, this is something he should be practicing always, not just during uh, the coronavirus season as we've come to know it. But for review, the best contact lens hygiene, number one, wear your contacts only as they are um, recommended to you or prescribed to you by your doctor. So, so if they are daily disposable, throw them away at the end of the day, open a new one tomorrow. That is the most hygienic um, you can get two week you want to re be really careful to follow that two week um, and then monthly of course if they are reusable you're going to clean them every night um, and then throw them away um, and open a new pair once a month or sooner if you know it rips or something's wrong with the lens um, you may go through them sooner if you need to uh, you want to make sure that you are washing your hands again these are all things that you should be doing regardless of coronavirus season um, but wash your hands thoroughly, 20 seconds. Make sure that you wash the tips of your fingers. Pay special attention to those before touching your lenses or your eyes. And one really um, good thing to do right now is to check your contact lens supply. If you are furloughed, you may or may not have benefits for um, a while. So if you need to use your benefits while you have them to order more contact lenses, um, go ahead and do that. Uh, and then you wanna make sure that you check that you have um, some extra cases and solution on hand in case you need them. Um, your contact lens case should be changed every time you run out of a bottle of contact lens solution. All right, bonus tip number two. Uh, this is specific to Joe, of course. He's now the do-it-yourselfer. He needs to wear safety glasses. If he doesn't have them, he really needs to pick up a pair of safety glasses. Um, it's never a good time to get something in your eyes that someone has to get out for you. But especially right now, you really don't want to be exposing your eyes to anything additional that they don't have to be. Um, on that note, if an emergency with your eyes does happen, whether it's related to um, a high-speed fragment coming off of something that your um, handyman is working on, or um, if it's just a contact lens infection, or you feel like you're having allergies and itchy eyes, um, call your optometrist. They may be able to help you out. As I mentioned, at Nittany Eye, we're doing um, to some telehealth and um, we are seeing urgencies in person when we need to and we want to try to keep you out of the ER if we can. All right, we've got our last kind of category of um, person who's participating in um, our quarantine characters. 
and that's Gwen. Gwen is a student um, now doing virtual education um, that she didn't used to. And like so many students, her parents are probably working from home too. Um, so it's probably movie night a lot more often than it used to be. So she's getting a lot more screen time, um, which may be concerning her parents. Like I mentioned before, sometimes kids just like to sit close to the screen. They like the magnification um, that they get, regardless of whether or not it's actually blurry for them. Um, but Gwen might ha also have um, new onset of blurred vision. She's probably having some trouble sleeping um, because of how much screen use. A lot of these would apply to those of you who raised your hands as Mary as well. So we're going to go ahead and get started with tips for Gwen. Uh, this tip, really everybody should be practicing, change your blue light exposure. Um, we are all looking at our smartphone screens a lot these days. You want, you want to make sure that the setting to uh, minimize your blue light exposure is set to on. Um, and it's really simple. You just go to your settings and find the little blue light um, icon and flip it on. It, it might even already be on, but it's worth checking. Um, because computer monitors don't always have that setting, uh, if you have that setting, great, go ahead and turn it on. But if you don't, consider either an overlay over your screen um, or there is a special coating available for glasses. Um, that from clinical practice, a lot of patients notice really decrease their um, eye strain with uh, desk work. So uh, patients of mine who are already in an office all the time um, tend to get that coating and really notice an improvement using it. Um, even if you don't have a prescription for your glasses, um, if you're like me, I don't wear glasses or contacts, if you can believe it, um, there are non-prescription computer glasses that have that blue light um, reflector on them. And so you can ask, um, you can ask us about it, and NEI carries them. I believe Rachel was looking at um, getting those available online as well. So we can get an update from her on that when we, when we conclude, um, but that's something that is typically very beneficial. All right, this tip um, I mentioned before for adults getting outside to help you separate, you know, uh, work from home, but um, it's really, really important for kids. One of my favorite um, clinical topics uh, is the concept of how we manage myopia, how we manage nearsightedness, because it's really changing uh, for kids today. So that nearsightedness, any one of you who progressively had stronger glasses as um, a child, so every year you went to the eye doctor and you got stronger glasses, um, that's something that we're looking at being able to intervene, uh, which is really cool. It's uh, something we didn't have in the past. And outdoor play, so children who spend time outside, it's actually been shown to delay the onset of that nearsightedness, to delay the need of, for glasses for someone who um, can't see as well far away, which is really, really cool. Um, so outdoor play as much as you can. I know before I started this, there were snow flurries outside, so it is hard to get outside some of the days, at least here in Pennsylvania. But um, aim for some outdoor play every day. Um, that's really beneficial for uh, kids developing vision. All right, this is our last official tip. I believe I still have a bonus one uh, to share. Um, this one is can happen in adults for sure. It's more common in kids. So tip number seven is know the signs of needing to build or rest your eye muscles. Um, so the two functions of our eye muscles that I'm gonna mention are accommodate and converge. And we do both of those things. We accommodate and we converge with our eye muscles to do up close work. Um, the convergence aspect of this is the part where you bring your eyes together. So if you cross your eyes to look at the tip of your nose, that's what you're doing, but to a lesser extent when you're working it near. Convergence problems happen when your eyes don't pull in well enough on their own to sustain that long amount of near work that you're doing now. Um, or maybe it's not near work, maybe it's near leisure, right? Um, just on your cell phone more. Uh, but the symptoms with that tend to be eye strain, um, blurry vision, you can get headaches. The, primary symptom that I notice with that um, is feeling tired when you shouldn't be tired after about 10 minutes of reading. So you've just had your second cup of coffee, it's still 9 a.m., um, but reading makes you feel like you could go take a nap. Um, that's, that's typically a problem with convergence. And then accommodation is the focusing aspect. So the convergence pulls the eyes together. The accommodation is what allows you to focus up close versus far away and back and forth. Um, kids have phenomenal ability to do that back and forth. Um, that's part of why they like things so close because they can see them so close. <laughs> um, but if you have a problem with accommodation, then typically either distance or near is blurry um, and it comes and goes. Uh, it's more of a sign that they need a change or a new glasses prescription. If it's always blurry at distance or always blurry at near, 
um, if it's sometimes blurry at distance, sometimes blurry at near, then what may be happening is their eye muscles that, that do the accommodation are getting stuck, so to speak, in just near, so then they won't relax to far, or getting stuck at just distance and they won't kind of kick in to help at near. So it often comes and goes because you have to engage in that near activity, for example, for a while before the stuck thing kind of starts to happen. Um, so I hope I've explained that okay. That's probably the most uh, um, technical tip that I've got. It's not so important that you know someone has a problem with convergence or accommodation, just knowing the symptoms um, so that you can ask for help from your eye doctor if you need it on those things. All right, bonus tip number three, distance from technology. And what I mean by this is um, I get the question from parents a lot, how much time should kids be spending on screens? And that question is actually very fluid right now. Like I mentioned, we, uh, we're all using screens a lot more right now while we're home, more often than we're used to. Um, but one question that doesn't often get asked, but I think is um, very important as well, is how far from a screen um, should my kids be? And uh, there's a distance called the Harmon distance, and it is the distance to your elbow. So if you put your hand up straight out in front of you, and then you bend your elbow, your elbow should be um, not quite a foot, but probably close to a foot from the tip of your nose. Um, kids, of course, are going to have a shorter distance there, so they should be holding at their elbow or farther away. Um, their lap is good if they're up and lounging, but if you notice them creeping in closer than their... Um, closer than their elbow, that's when you tell your kids to, no, push it out here and, and hold it out there. Um, so that's the distance that I recommend for technology. That was actually my last bonus tip. So that was um, seven, uh, seven tips for vision and three bonus tips. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Rachel to ask if anyone asked any questions that I can answer. Um, looks like we have a couple questions here. Let me see. All right, we want to know, are there any tips for making sure we buy the right kind of screen covering for filtering blue light? That's a good question. Um, I don't have any tips. There are some, um, uh, there's some sort of instrument that measures blue light. So you could measure how much blue light you're getting it, but I'm not sure where you would get that instrument or if that's something, um, Rachel, you might know since you work in our optical, if we have. Um, something that measures that and if that's something available to patients. Um, what I can tell you is the glasses that have the blue right reflector, it, it's noticeable if you hold it up and then move it out of, out, of your, um, out of your visual area, I guess. So if you did that with the screen, you should notice a difference um, in the color just slightly. Yeah, that's one thing with the blue light glasses that we have here, the, the filtering lenses, um, they don't completely block blue light. Um, so you are still able to see blues. Um, they just block the harmful blue light. So that's one thing. It is kind of hard to tell. Um, there are ways to check online, but those are really testing for glasses that completely block the blue light, whereas ours let in um, the light that it's okay for your eyes and they kind of block the harmful rays. So I'm not sure if we have a, an exact test. We just use a blue light flashlight, honestly, um, and we can see how much of that is actually blocked, uh, which is pretty, pretty fascinating. Great. Thanks, Rachel, for helping me with that question. Absolutely. Um, let's see. We have another question here. Um, what do you consider the viability of better vision without glasses methods? Anything legitimate in that area of natural myopia reduction for those yeah. who have... This is a very good question. I'm sorry, I may have introduced, I uh, interrupted towards the end of the question. Um, if there's more, please continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a two-parter, so we'll have you answer the first okay. part and we'll go back. So we used to think um, maybe five, six, seven years ago that for kids who tested with a low amount of myopia, we used to think that we could help slow the progression by simply not prescribing for them. And that was, um, studies have shown that that didn't work. Um, there are other methods for slowing down the progression of, of nearsightedness, but not using glasses is actually not one of them. Um, there is, though, this concept of where people use the glasses and then they think, oh, the glasses made my vision worse. Um, it's not so much that glasses make your vision worse. It's that now your brain knows how clear things can be and you start to psychologically want things to be the most crisp that they can. Um, so, for example, I do have glasses. Um, I just don't wear them very often because I, I don't really need them. I use them for night driving and things. But if I put my prescription glasses on first thing in the morning and then take them off in the afternoon, I do notice that things are, are blurry. Whereas 
if I don't wear them at all through the day, I don't notice any blur. And so it's more of a perception that the glasses made your vision worse than it is real. Um, and as far as slowing down the progression, um, typical, regular, just your prescription glasses, they're not gonna slow down the progression of that. Um, but um, there are some other ways to do it, um, which you can consult with your optometrist about. All right, you answered both parts on that one. Um, so the next one here is about um, healing a sty from home. Um, mm -hmm. what, at what point do we need to come in and, uh, and see the doctor or is there anything you can do at home to let that heal? Yeah, so if you experience a sty at home, if you've had them before, um, you may know what's worked for you before. So if warm compresses have worked for you before, that's what I would recommend um, doing again. Um, take a break from your contact lenses if you're a contact lens wear. Um, use the warm compresses as often as you can, as hot as you can stand. And if you're using a warm washcloth, it's kind of a bummer. You need to aim for a minimum of eight minutes of actual heat. So it probably means reheating that washcloth. Um, you can find them online or we carry them at NITNEI. Um, Bruder Masks is the name brand that we have. Um, but they're masks you can put in the microwave um, that'll hold the heat for a lot longer than that eight minute time frame, which are much more beneficial um, in terms of keeping the heat and the heat actually doing what it's supposed to do. So that's what you can do from home are really warm compresses every chance you possibly can. Um, if there is swelling to the point that you are in pain, um, more than just tender, actual true pain, um, or if they're swelling to the point where your eyes not really open, um, or if you've tried the warm compresses and it hasn't improved, then I would definitely call your eye doctor, call us, um, and we can maybe do a telehealth appointment and then tell you if we need to see you from there um, or answer some questions over the phone um, if we can. Sometimes it does take an antibiotic to make the um, sty go away. Um, so that's one reason for making sure that if it's not improving at home to make sure that you do consult with us. All right, thank you for that. Now we have two more questions here. They are um, more in line on the blue light glasses. So I'll go ahead and answer those. So Great, thank you. Of course, the glasses that we are going to have available, they are called Polinelli. Um, like I said, we are working on that. We do not currently have sizes for kids, um, but they do kind of range in size. So it depends on the age um, on which um, glasses they might be able to wear. So if they're really, really young, um, they might be a little bit too big for them. But if they are around like 10, 11, 12, they could, we probably have some that would definitely fit for them. So um, yes, we, we might have some for kids and we are looking to expand that. Um, as far as clip-ons for um, people who already have glasses, um, that is something that we do not have available right now, um, but that, that is something that we can definitely look into. Um, we do have a couple of clip-ons. So that's something that we can kind of explore, um, but that is a really good idea. So thanks for that question. Um, we have another question here. For you, Dr. Harsh, um, do you consider overprescription or prescribing to or past 2020 to be a culprit in the worsening development of myopia? This is a really, really good question. So not everybody is capable of seeing better than 2020, and I, I want to mention that. So 2020 is a measure of a healthy eye. Um, some people can actually see even better than that with, with correction, without correction. Some people are just made to see better. Um, and it hasn't really been studied to tell us if that makes it worsen or not. Um, what we know that overprescribing does, if someone does not require it, is it makes it harder to compare um, what, what the change is year after year. So we don't necessarily know that it's harmful. Um, we do know that it makes an accurate measurement the next year more difficult, um, but we don't yet know that it is necessarily harmful in any way. All right, thank you. And I have another question here. How dangerous is it to view close up things with my negative contact lenses? Um, a situation I wouldn't totally need correction. That, that's a good question. Um, we don't know that it's harmful at all. Um, so if you have trouble with accommodation, which I mentioned in the um, webinar, uh, if you have trouble with accommodation, it's actually gonna be easier for you to use your natural focal length if you are somebody, your natural focal point, I should say, if you are someone who's nearsighted. So it'll be easier if you just take off the glasses or you might notice it's easy to see your phone um, because you don't have to do any work at all um, once you take your contacts out uh, at nighttime. 
but you're not actually doing any harm. You might actually notice that you have to do more work with the contacts or glasses on than you have to once you take them off. Um, there's nothing wrong with that as long as it's not giving you um, eye strain or anything. We haven't, we haven't um, seen any studies that say that that makes vision worse, that that makes your ability to accommodate any worse with, or anything along those lines. All right, so I think that is all the questions here. Thank you again, Dr. Harsh, for taking the time and thank you everyone. Those were really great questions. Um, if you have any more questions or concerns while you're at home um, with your vision, um, please feel free to give us a call and we can answer that to the best of our ability. Um, but again, thank you, Dr. Harsh. And for anyone that wants to look at the webinar again, maybe look back at the tips, we are going to get this on our website as well. So we can all relive this um, webinar. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Rachel, for being a, a great moderator, a great host. Um...